Is China now the center of the world? The Middle Kingdom seems to be establishing itself as a nodal point of a new multipolar international system, challenging US hegemony over the international system. The most recent example of this was a visit to Peking by President Lula of Brazil from the 12th to the 14th of April. The Chinese President, Xi Jinping, gave him the warmest possible welcome, calling him an old friend of China on several occasions. This follows the seminal visit of Xi Jinping to Russia in March, when he and Vladimir Putin claimed to be making changes to world politics not seen for 100 years. That visit was followed by the first official visit abroad of the Chinese Defense Minister, who met Putin in the Kremlin on the 17th of April to deepen China's military relationship with Russia. Brazil is the second largest country in the Western Hemisphere and is the B in BRICS, the increasingly important alliance of Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa. BRICS now has a bigger GDP than the G7. Its population totals 3.2 billion against the G7 777 million. Moreover, the superlatives of its member states are impressive. Russia is the biggest country in the world with the largest number of nuclear weapons. China is the biggest country in the world in terms of population, the biggest manufacturer and soon the biggest economy. India is the biggest democracy and so on. But BRICS is also exerting a magnetic pull over other states. Early in April, China brokered the reconciliation between Saudi Arabia and Iran, a historic moment in international relations. Both Saudi Arabia and Iran are seeking to join BRICS, just as Iran has already joined the Shanghai Cooperation Organization created 20 years ago by Russia and China. Apart from being a geopolitical alliance, this is also a hydrocarbon alliance. Saudi Arabia is the largest oil producer in the world, followed by Russia. These two countries now control OPEC, and therefore the world's oil price. Iran is the third largest producer of natural gas in the world, after Russia and the US. China and India are massive consumers of hydrocarbons, and China's carbon emissions have tripled in the last two decades. In other words, this is an alliance of countries which could not give a damn for net zero, and still less for American and European woke values. They are countries interested in large amounts of cheap energy to fuel industrial production. Their economies are based on manufacture, engineering, communications, high tech, and some of the most sophisticated weaponry in existence. Unlike the West, theirs is not a virtual casino economy based on debt which can never be paid off. The BRIC states are not interested in exporting so-called universal values which are in reality nothing but hypocrisy on a global scale, but instead in constituting a multipolar world order which reflects the reality of different value systems around the globe. So whether we like it or not, the days of Western hegemony are numbered. And we have no one else to blame for that but ourselves.